Welcome back to another Roblox Studio tutorial. In today's video we're going to be taking a look at some different lighting effects you can add into your games. And let's go ahead and just take a quick look at a couple of different examples that I've made. So over here on the far left is the quick and easy way of doing it. Um, inside here I have a tunnel. Inside the tunnel I've put different parts along the top. And as you step on a part then it lights up those parts. And you can see once they're lit up that I have parts throughout the tunnel here. And as soon as I touch on that brick that I touched at the beginning, this tunnel lights up. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at another example. And this time, instead of just a regular part, I made a model. So this is a model that's supposed to re resemble a torch. I didn't spend a lot of time on it, but you can make it more re realistic if you like. Uh, same idea, though, as I touch this part right here, then it lights up the torches. Okay, and for the last example, I've made a, a very simple torch that you can pick up. And as soon as you pick it up, it lights up. You can unequip it. And if you re-equip it, then it lights up again. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at these three different examples and how you can add these into your game. So let's go ahead and get started and see how we can make this in Roblox Studio. Okay, so for the first example where I just use parts to light up a dark place, like maybe a tunnel or a cave, the different things you're going to need is you'll need a part that you're going to step on to activate the lights, and then the lights themselves. And for the lights, all I did was just add a part into the game. And what I did to make it a little bit easier on myself so I didn't have to reference each light separately is I put these lights into a model. And the way you can do that, if you get a couple parts in the game, so I'll grab this one and one more. And then what you can do is go under workspace and you'll add a model. And there's my model right here so I can just click on the part and then drag it into the model here. And I would do that for both of them just like that. Alright so I'm going to delete this one for now though. So I put my different lights into a model and I call this model lights. And you can see I have my different parts inside of this model here. As far as the coding goes, you'll be adding a script onto this part here. So I named this one Lightpad, but you can call it whatever you want to. So let's go ahead and take a look at the script. And I'll zoom in a little bit. Okay, so for the first line, what I did is I just said light part equals script.parent. So I'm just li linking the script to the parent or the part it's attached to. This light model is, what I did for this one is I'm referencing the model. So this one, if we look, it's game, which is the very top, dot workspace, dot lights, which is the model that all my light parts are attached to. So if you create a different name for your model, then you'll need to change that here. So basically, it's always going to be game, dot workspace, dot whatever the name of your model is. The next part will be creating a function. And you don't, you don't actually need this part here, so I'm just going to get rid of it. So for a function, I called the function light on, but you're welcome to call it whatever you like. What I did at the very start is as soon as the player touches on the part, I went ahead, and what I'm talking about is the part that they step on to activate it. So as, as soon as they step on that part to activate the lights, I go ahead and destroy that part. Otherwise, as the player touches the part more and more, it increases the brightness. So there's probably other ways of doing this, but this was just a quick and easy way of doing it. As soon as the player touches the part, then it just destroys it. Okay, I'm using a for loop to go through each part in the model. To do, to do that, you're going to say for i, and then child in pairs. This right here is the name of the model that you want to loop through. And then the function that gets each part of the, the model is this right here, get children. And then for each child in this model, or each part in this model, what I'm going to be doing is creating a new instance of point light, which is what I'm doing with this line right here. Next, you need to tell it where to put this point light, and that'll be light.parent. And then since child is standing for each part in this model, the light.parent will be child. Okay, these last two lines will adjust the range and the brightness of your lights. And then the very last thing you have to do at the end is say light part dot touched 
colon connect, and then the name of your function. So remember, this is the name of the part that you're going to step on, and then this is the name of the function that we're talking about up here. So if this section right here doesn't make a lot of sense, that's okay. If you're doing this by yourselves, the parts you'll need to change is this right here. This will be the name of your model. And then inside here, if you want to change that, you can do whatever you want to for each part in this model. So for the most part, it's going to be the same. But if you want to change things, there's only a few things that you would actually have to change. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at the second, exa second example. So what I did for the second one is instead of just a single part that will light up, I created a model. And then what I'm doing with this model is I'm only having the orange ball on top or the yellow ball on top light up. So to create this model, all I did was under the parts here, I took a cylinder. And another thing I took was the sphere. I rotated the cylinder to where it's standing up. And then I put the ball on top. Okay, and like I said before, you can customize that to make it more realistic if you like to. Okay, and what I did, just like the other ones, I put all these different things into a model. So what you're going to end up with is a model that contains different models. So I'll open up this one, which I call Torches. So Torches is the model that contains all these different models. So I have Torches, which is the collection of them, and then each individual torch is a model that's composed of two parts. So the bottom stick part of the torch, I just left that as part. And then for the ball part, I called that flame. So as far as the coding goes for this, under the part that you'll use to activate it, I called this one torch part. And then for the script, up here, just like I did before, I'm linking the script to the part. The next one, I'm referencing the torch group. So what I'm referencing here is under game.workspace, um, referencing this right here. So this is the model that contains the torch models. Okay, for my function, uh, what we're doing for this part is we're saying, just like before, torch pad colon destroy. And we don't need that part. That was just a test that I was doing. So torch pad destroy. This destroys the torch pad as soon as you touch it. So they can't reactivate and make the lights brighter and brighter. Uh, we're using a for loop again. So for this one, it's the same as before. And you'll notice for these for loops, not a whole lot changes. So I still have the same first part, which says for I and then child. And then this part changed. And what this is, is I'm referencing that torch group. So this is the group of torches. So this will be the model I'm trying to loop through. And then what I'm going to say is I'm going to add a new instance of point light, just like we did before. The parent for this is child.flame. So the way this works, the child for this model would be torch, for example. And then what I'm saying is torch.flame to get at the, the ball on the top. So this child variable is actually torch. And then what I'm doing is I'm going under that torch model and I'm talking about the individual torch here. Under that individual torch, I'm referencing the ball on the top, which I called flame. And these last two lines, like I mentioned before, are just to adjust the range of the light and the brightness. All right, and let's go ahead and take a look at the last example. So for the last example, I created a model of a torch, just like I did before. And this one is a little bit different, though, so let me go and click on it. So what you have to do first is add a tool into the game. So you can go under Workspace and then type in Tool. And here's the tool that I just added. And what you're going to want to do is add all the parts that you want to be attached to it inside the tool. So the two different parts that I have under this tool are the flame, which is the ball at the top, and then the stick. I renamed this one Handle so that when the player grabs it, this is the part that they pick up on. As far as the script goes, uh, standard thing, so we're linking the script to the, the parent. Uh, this part right here, what I'm referencing is the flame on the top, so I just do that by saying game.workspace.tool, 
And then under Tool, I'm referencing the Flame part, which is the top part. Uh, there's some built-in functions that help you handle tools. One of them is on equip, which is when the player picks up the tool. When the player picks up the tool, uh, this will look familiar. All I'm doing is adding the point light onto the part and then adjusting its range and its brightness. Okay, there's also another function for when they unequip the item. When they unequip the item, I'm just getting rid of the point light by referencing flame part and then the point light that's under the flame part and then destroy and then at the bottom you just have to do just like for the touched events so this will say torch dot equipped connect and then the function name and the same for unequipped alright let's go back to this part right here so I had a few issues issues with this getting it started so some things you may have to change under the tool and under the appearance section you may have to adjust these numbers because sometimes when you pick up a part, it may not be facing the right direction. So what I would recommend is just go through these one by one and just change them. So like, for example, for this X position, if it's not the way you want it to be, change it to 100 and then try 010 and then 001 until it looks right to you. The grip position is probably another thing that you're going to have to adjust. So when I first started this, it picked up the stick kind of near the top. So I had to fix this by just kind of experimenting with the different numbers and it ended up by putting a 1 for the X value that it looked like it was gripping the, the tool toward the bottom. Another thing I ran into is this part would automatically generate a weld onto it. And if it does that, you want to try to delete it. Um, another thing I had to do was lift it off the base plate a little bit to get rid of that weld. I'm not super familiar with the welds and it seems like that's something they added kind of recently. So if you know of a better way to handle that, then feel free to drop that in the comments. And that is about it for the lighting effects. Hopefully I covered enough examples that you can add something interesting into your game. Uh, the very first example was just the, the simple way of doing it. The second way was how to add models and how to loop through models that are inside of models. And the last example was how to create a tool that lights up when you pick it up and then turns off when you let it go. Okay, well I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and stay tuned for the next one.